In the Sahara Desert, sand dunes ripple into the horizon. These soft golden hills roll like the deep blue waters. And this beetle does his best to sail them. He pushes onward, bound by the scent of fresh dung. Only faint traces are carried by the winds, and yet still he is highly attuned to the smell. But he isn't the first. This breeding pair has already found the source, and the two have quickly gotten to work. True to their name, dung beetles rely mostly on dung for food. Using powerful legs, they sculpt it into a ball before rolling it away, often pushing up to ten times their weight. Once they've reached soft ground, they bury it in a nest where they mate. The female will lay her eggs inside the ball, and the offspring will start their lives with a feast. What goes in must come out. It's a process as natural as breathing, found in nearly all life forms. Food is digested, its nutrients absorbed, and all that remains is the waste to be eliminated. Dung is mostly made of water and undigested fibre, neither of which would seem suitable as food. But in nature, nothing is wasted. In between these fibre particles, there are microbes containing nitrogen and essential amino acids, the perfect ingredients for an insect meal. For these beetles, dung is on the menu, and the fresher it is, the better. While the young feed on the solid itself, the adults prefer to squeeze out the liquid. With specialised mouthparts, they filter the food separating what can be eaten from what can't. Over 6,000 species are found across the world, all of which belong to the superfamily Scarabioidea. But only those in the group Scarabiini feed entirely on dung. These are the true dung beetles. At the opportunity, the others will also feed on detritus, the decaying remains of plants and animals. In fact, many beetles in the superfamily feed on detritus, suggesting that dung feeding may have originated from this behaviour. When plants decay, their leaves, wood and bark are all broken down into smaller fragments of dead matter Water can turn the detritus into a rich paste, with liquid cementing both nutrients and microbes. In tropical habitats especially, this paste may have selected for specialised mouthparts, allowing ancient beetles to squeeze out the liquids. Perhaps it was this adaptation that prepared them towards a diet of dung, as the two are similar in texture. The earliest dung beetles originated in the Lower Cretaceous, around 115 million years ago, when the world was dominated by dinosaurs. To them, they were giant gods that gifted the lands with giant droppings. It was an era also marked by the rise of flowering plants, which became a staple food for herbivores. Dinosaurs feeding on these plants had less fibre in their diet and eventually the first palatable dung was set on the menu. Richer in nutrients and abundant, it provided a niche that drove the evolution of dung feeding. Beetles already adapted for detritus paste made the smoothest transition. Over eons, they evolved alongside the dinosaurs. With the first major radiation occurring in the mid-Cretaceous, but their fates were also tied, and around 65 million years ago, when the dinosaurs went extinct, many dung beetles soon followed. The reign of dinosaurs had ended, 
and the mammals rose to take their place. At the time, these ancient mammals were small creatures with even smaller droppings, not so valuable as a meal. But some beetles were perhaps generalists in their diet, already adapted to feeding on both dinosaur and mammal dung. And this may have allowed them to survive the mass extinction. Then, during the Paleogene, the beetles radiated again, alongside the mammals. These mega herbivores scaled dramatically in size as they took on the niches left vacant, starting from just a few kilograms before the dinosaur extinction. Some mammals reached over 700 by the end of the Paleocene, and so providing dung large enough for the beetles to thrive on. Modern dung beetles have descended from these ancestors, but their lives haven't changed much. When it comes to feeding, different species have different behaviours. There are the rollers, tunnelers and dwellers. The rollers sculpt dung into balls before rolling them away to bury. The tunnelers don't care for the effort. They simply dig down into the dung, creating tunnels to bury pieces. And the dwellers are perhaps the laziest, content with just living in the dung itself. Beetle burrows have been found in fossils of dinosaur dung, which suggests tunneling has remained almost unchanged for over 65 million years. In fact, tunneling may have been the ancestral behaviour of all dung beetles, with rolling evolving several times throughout the lineage. Rolling may have co-evolved with the rise of grasslands. Around 40 million years ago in the mid-Eocene, the first grasslands began carpeting the continents. They spread quickly, dominating even hot dry regions where they were followed by grazing mammals. In beetles, rolling and burying may have evolved to protect dung from drying in open grasslands. Fierce competition could have also driven rolling behaviours. Dung is a random and fleeting resource, only valuable while fresh. When populations are high, droppings can be quickly infested, and for tunnelers, competition for nesting space is intense. Some tunnelers have even evolved adaptations to ensure they can fight for their food, using horns as weapons in combat. But rolling offers the alternative, a home far away from the chaos. Dwelling also evolved from ancestral tunneling, but only once in the lineage leading to Onitocellus and Trigiscus. Dwellers build nests within the dung itself, a behaviour that may have evolved in low populations with little competition, or when tunneling is simply too difficult. For millennia, dung beetles have remained relatively unchanged, but some species have gone against the family grain. In the lowland rainforests of Peru, one dung beetle has dumped its diet for a change in menu. Instead, it's a predator with a taste only for millipedes, the first known case of its kind. But its family history of dung feeding means it lacks the sharp mouthparts commonly found in carnivores, so it improvises, prying its prey's head from their body in decapitation. Some dung beetles already scavenge on dead animals, so when competition is fierce, this evolutionary leap to predation may not be as wide as it seems. But for most, dung beetles have settled with their diet comfortable with their age-old role as part of nature's cleanup crew. <laughs>